Hey everybody, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on post-production here on YouTube. Today we're talking about adding 3D objects to video using Blender and Fusion. This is exciting. Let's take a look at what we'll be making. There it is. And everything works well, sits nicely, but this plant is fake. Not just a fake plant, it's like a, it's a CG plant. This plant was made in Blender and composited into this shot. So if you want to make something at least as good as this, here's the general workflow of how I did it. Let's start out in Blender, shall we? So in Blender, I have this model of a plant, which I totally did not make. Got it from a website with people that are way better at making 3D stuff than I am, and it looks super rad. If you want something to look realistic, you gotta have a really good model. I'll switch back to not rendered mode here. And all I did was kind of approximate the kind of camera lens and angle that we're using here. There are some fancy ways to do this, but I just kind of guessed. I could tell it's sort of a longer focal length and that the camera's looking down slightly. So that's kind of where I place the camera in Blender. Here's what that looks like. This plant is placed on a plane and this plane just has the regular material, but over here under our object properties, I clicked shadow catcher. What that does is just make sure that we only render the shadow and we don't actually render the plane when we render this out. When we export this image, it will just be our plant with a shadow on transparent. I didn't track the camera or anything. This is just a stationary camera because something where you just kind of have some camera shake, the camera isn't actually physically moving through the space. You can really kind of do that in Fusion just with a 2D track and it's a lot easier, a lot faster. So we're just rendering one still image and we're gonna track it inside of Fusion. So all we have to do is make sure that this still image from Blender is how we want. Over here for our render engine, I pick Cycles, switch to GPU Compute. For our render, I picked 64 max samples and clicked on denoise. Under our output properties, 1920 by 1080. And I selected open EXR, RGBA, float half. And as far as the render passes, you can actually preview them here if you're in rendered view. And you click this little drop down. You can select your render passes and make sure everything's looking nice. So if we have shadow, we can just look at the shadows of the scene. I can even select just the shadow catcher and I can select whatever passes that I want. What I actually did for this was I set up a couple of different view layers. Those are kind of like uh, render layers and you can do that by adding things to different collections. So I'm going to add this plane to its own collection. We'll call this floor, the plane inside of the floor collection, and we'll call this one plant. And now up here where it says view layer, we'll change this to plant and I can decide how to treat each of these collections. So for the plant, I want it to show up in the render, but for the floor, I only want the indirect lighting. I can click this and add a new view layer and we'll call this floor. This time I'll just turn on the indirect lighting for the plant and leave the floor. Let's go up here and do a quick render. And so we have the plant by itself. I'll make sure if I have a sub collection here to turn that to indirect only for our floor two. And now we have just our shadow so that when we render this out, we have the plant and we have the shadow on separate layers. These all go into one EXR file that we can bring into Fusion. We can drop this file into our node graph working on our shot. And over here in our inspector, we can change the different layers. We can choose just to show the floor or just the plant, or both if we want. And now we're ready to do our compositing. First thing you might notice about this kind of render is that it's really contrasty. Parts of it are really dark. The reason for that is because EXRs are in linear color space, and that is really good for compositing, but doesn't quite look that great on your monitor by default. So the first thing that we wanna do is take our log footage and convert that into linear too, so that the colors from the footage are going to mix well with the colors from our 3D render. We can do that with an effect called Cineon Log. What this does is take footage that's shot in log and turns it into linear color space. So I have this set to log to linear. Log type is BMD film 4.6K, which is how this was shot. And now if we preview this, I'll hit two on the keyboard. It's very dark and contrasty, which is very much like our 3D render. So let's take our plant layer from our EXR and I'm gonna merge that over our shot and it's just kind of thrown here in the middle. Now what we really want to do is view this how we're actually going to view it instead of this linear color space. The best way to do that is to add another Cineon log node right before the media out. And then under mode, instead of log to lin, 
we'll switch to lin to log. That's just kind of reversing what we did to our footage initially, and it's turning our footage and our 3D render back into log. And then what we can do is put a LUT on this in our preview here in Fusion that's set to our camera settings so that we can kind of get an idea of what this will look like when we do some color correction to it. This isn't going to be perfect, but it'll give us a pretty good idea of how to kind of match things up. So we're going to take our plant and add some color correction to it. Give it a little bit of a blur. Add some grain, which is probably pretty hard to see here on YouTube. And we're also going to use a transform to kind of place this where we want it on the table. Then we want this to move along with our shot. So I can bring up a planar tracker and track the movement of our shot. Maybe something like this where there's a little bit more contrast. For motion type, we'll just say translation rotation scale. Set our reference time and track this back and forth. And once we track this through the whole shot, we can click this create planar transform and that will make this node here. Anything that we run through this node is going to move along with the camera. And because of all the weird things that Fusion does when you have two clips that are different sizes, what I like to do is make a clear background node, which is the same resolution as our original footage, and just merge our plant over that background and take that composite that's sized just right and put that into the planar tracker so that everything moves along the way it should. And now we have our plant moving along with our camera. I can do a very similar thing for the shadows. We have the shadows layer here, which is merged over our background and positioned just right, ran through the planar tracker and merged over our footage. And we have that blended down a little bit here in our merge. So I can actually control the darkness of the shadows pretty easily. And now when we put the plant and the shadows and everything all together, it works cohesively. And we end up with our nice looking composite. A couple things to keep in mind. If you want to have a good 3D composite, you have to match a few things. One is the colors and the contrast. Notice how the darkest parts here are not any darker than the darkest parts in our image. The lightest parts aren't any lighter than the lightest parts in our footage. The colors aren't more saturated or less saturated. They all kind of sit where they're supposed to. And our main source of light is consistent in our footage as well as our 3D model. The darkness and the direction of the shadows all seem appropriate for our environment. Back in Blender, not only did I have my camera set up right and my angle and all of that, but I also had a light source back here, which is simulating the light that this would be taking from that back window. So there's a great big white rectangle here kind of backlighting everything. And that's what's happening here in Blender too. That's how we get that kind of realistic soft shadow as well as the glint of light off of the edge here. Everything works really naturally because we took all of that into consideration. So matching the lighting and the angle and everything is really stuff that you have to do in your 3D software. And then things like the contrast and the saturation and even some of the basic camera movement, as well as kind of the sharpness, the grain, that kind of stuff. That's stuff that we can fix and make better and make sure it's just right inside of Fusion. And there's our finished composite. I feel like it looks pretty nice. So there's a little overview of how to render something and composite it inside of Fusion, adding a little 3D object to stuff. You know what I'm saying? If you want me to dive a little bit deeper into this, maybe do a step-by-step -step tutorial, let me know in the comments. Until next time, I hope that your shadows are accurate and that your lighting makes sense for your environment. Gosh, that was just a little too nerdy. That was even pretty nerdy for me. Hope your ambient occlusion is... Subtle. <laughs> you can unsubscribe if you want to, it's okay.